I'm breaking loose, breaking loose. I'm breaking loose, honey, I'm breaking loose. Well, I'm breaking loose, running free. The open road keeps calling me. And my soul is restless, and my feet just can't be still. Well, I don't know where I'm bound, but I know I'm bound to ramble around. And taste of this old life until I've had my fill. Well, ain't no telling. I'm like 50, but I'm good for it, okay? You ain't got it. Get out. Will, give me $50. Nope. Give me $50, Will. Now listen to me, J.D., please. The bus fare to Hollywood is $62.80, and that don't leave no gambling money. Will, give me $50. You want to walk to California? Give me $50, Will. What? <laughs> J.D. calls, and J.D. has got a full house. A straight flush? Yeah, I guess I got lucky. You drew two cars for a straight flush? That happens sometimes, mister. What about that card between your feet? Didn't you like that one? Yeah, I wonder how that got there. Anytime you, you feel like jumping in here and helping me out. Dude, you're, you're doing just fine. <laughs> Well, I thought you were just gonna let him kill me. <laughs> Hold it right there, young fella. Well, I don't guess you've had enough, have you? Or do you want us to go out and call a local sheriff? Save yourself a dime. Take the big one first. Wanna go back in there? For what? I don't know, but I'll go back in if you will. Ow. Now that just doesn't seem like the smart thing to do, J.D. You mean we're gonna let him get away with that? Didn't say that. Come on. <laughs> you see the face on that cowboy? You do the gun on it? <laughs> no, run all the way to California. <laughs> well, what's your count now? Oh, 
Okay, let her rip. My record. They're taking my record. You boss? Bubba, I got two warthogs on Route 4 heading for the old McDaniel side and in a record. You stopping me, hear me? You want to shed booking for speeding? Speeding? They done an aggravated assault on a police officer, stole a vehicle, damaged property, destroyed county equipment, and attempted murder. Do you block them off of that road, you hear me? Yes, sir. to see yet? No. You still plan on reading all the books in encyclopedia? Uh-huh. Well, you're gonna be 80 bald and toothless time you get through. Maybe, but there won't be a smarter 80 bald and toothless old goat in America. Well, now, well, I ain't putting down your learning, but there's a lot of me and you got to do with our lives, huh? Well, we still got several years left before we're staring at 80. I know, but I mean a million things. Man, we got a bulldog, some steers, Madison Square Garden. Drive us an 18-wheeler from Maine to Alaska. Work on one of them shrimp boats down in Mobile Bay. Force some steel up in Ohio. Drink all the beer and love all the women. Don't take a long time, son. 
And then when we get our gut full, see, we'll find a lady that looks like Venus de Milo, cooks like Mama. Then we'll settle down and have 12 youngest feet. What do you think? We do half of that, we won't live to be 80. Yeah, but what a way to go. <laughs> I love it. Hey. Well, this ain't at all the way we had it planned, is it? I mean, we're gonna leave that ranch in Montana, and we're gonna travel all over the country. We're gonna see all the places we ain't ever seen. Did you know there was more than one queen in Egypt named Cleopatra? And the famous one, she was all set to marry one brother, and she went poisoned another brother. First stop, Hollywood. Plenty of work, a lot of sunshine, arms is right off the trees. All them pretty legs walking around. Man, that... Cleopatra, she got this Anthony to commit suicide by making believe she already killed herself. Now nah, we ain't going west, we're heading east. And neither one of us got the foggiest notion where we're going. And for your information, Will Eubanks, we got $18.60 between us and a vagrancy charge. And I'm cold. And hungry. My stomach feel like a gas factory. Get the light out of my eyes. Just wanted to see the tears. J.D., come alive. Huh? Oh. Where are we? We are where you want your ashes scattered when the Grim Reaper takes you. Are you funny, me? Oh. We're at the one place you know more about than any cowboy living or dead. Hot damn, we're in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh -huh, you bet. <laughs> USA! Uh, here comes trouble. Morning, fellas. Morning. You want I should knock your heads here or take you someplace else to do? Well, Will, I guess this is the end of my dream, son, but you try it and at least I'll go out happy. You see, mister, I'm, I'm a sick man, and, and all I wanted to do was see Nashville before I passed on. You look pretty healthy to me. Uh, yeah, well, it's one of them, uh, it's one of them creeping diseases. You see, it don't even show up till it's, it's ready to kill you stone dead. I mean, how long did the doc give me, Will, old buddy? Six weeks? Right about that. <laughs> I got a notion you'll outlive me, but I admire a man who can tell a lie as big as that without blinking. Now, get. Well, sir, a sick and dying man shall salute you. Our mess, J.D., you know that? <laughs> yeah, but I naturally got the charm in it. Charm will not fill your gut. Now, we better find a YMCA, dump our gear, and start looking for jobs. That's a good idea, but first got to call Lonnie. Lonnie who? Don't you remember Lonnie Grimes? Two weeks ago, Kansas City Chiefs and a bike. He was drunk for two days, J.D. He won't remember us. His exact words were, if you get to town, call me. He gave me his phone number. People there it is. are always saying that, J.D., and hoping you'll forget it. The trouble with you, Will you Banks, is you ain't got no faith. Now, give me a dime. Let's find a phone. No. No. Hello. Uh, hello, uh, Lonnie Grimes? Yep. Uh, Lonnie, this is uh, J.D. Reed. You remember you met me and my buddy Will at a football game a couple weeks ago? And uh, you told us we were ever in town to call you, and here we are. <laughs> oh, we got blind for two days. Yeah, well, I'm glad you remembered us, Lonnie. Oh, listen, I'm sorry I'm going to miss you guys. I'm going to be out of town for a couple of days. I got an idea, PJ. Yeah, uh, no, 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 it, it's, it's J.D., uh, J.D. and Will. Right. Why don't you guys stay at my place while uh, I'm out of town? I got a sweet little bet you can drive, too. Oh, well, that's great, Lonnie. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and listen, do me a favor, will you? Pick me up a package while I'm gone. I'd be glad to. Yeah, well, take this down now. Wait, I'm, I'm, writing, it, I'm writing it down. Uh-huh. Okay, I, yeah, I got it. I got it. Thank you, Lonnie. Now, you make yourself at home and have a real good time. Okay, bye. He didn't remember us. Wrong, wrong. As a matter of fact, he said we can stay at his digs. He's leaving town for a few days, and uh, not only that, we can use his car. What's the catch? <laughs> 
Don't catch me. Boy, that's called Southern hospitality. Now, he wants us to run a little errand for him, and then we'll get on over there. Come on, let's go. Get your bag. Yeah. Here we come. Here, hold on to that. I'll get the cat. Cat. Come on, your partners, okay? I'm thinking a shot of B-12 and four dozen horses, and I'll just come down here and kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sit on that thing, Will. Shoot. Lonnie done got him a playhouse. That's what Lonnie got. Look at that kitchen, Will. Who I can... Where's the bedroom? I want to see the bedroom. <laughs> J.D., look what I found. Hey, come here, look what I found. This guy ain't even used this encyclopedia. Well, he's used this bedroom. Come in here and look. Now, you talking about eating high on the hog? Get a load of this. <laughs> huh? Wow! What do you think? <laughs> hey, look at this here bath. Come here, look at this bathtub. Shoot! <laughs> you believe in that? Woo! <laughs> uh, Tasha, for who goes first? Well, you can get the Dallas Cowboys in that bathtub, or their cheerleaders, or both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where the dive board is. I rang the doorbell, but no one answered, and and it was open, so... No harm done, ma'am? No, no harm done. Make yourself home. What can we do for you, huh? I want you to help me find my sister. I don't rightly understand, ma'am. Well, I got a wire last week saying that my sister Carla had died. And then when I got here, well, no one here seems to know anything about Carla, not the police or the hospitals or, or even the funeral home. I mean, no one. There now, ma'am. Don't cry. I'm sorry. It's just that we were so close. I'm only a couple of years older than Carla, and after our folks passed away, we sort of brought each other up, you know. Your sisters. I don't know, ma'am. Well, I haven't given up hope. I. I guess it could be somebody's idea, but 
cruel joke. She was just so sweet and trusting, you know. I, I worried about her when she came down here to Nashville all by herself, and now I, I just don't know what to do anymore. Ma'am? Uh, miss? Mrs. Mrs. Harper, Kate Harper. Well, we sure do feel for you, Miss Harper. Ain't that right, J.D.? But why are you telling us all this? Well, because a private investigator is my only hope now. That seems like a reasonable idea, ma'am, but I still don't know what you... Lonnie Grimes, what's he do for a living? Oh, a case. That's why he's out of town. He's a private investigator. Ma'am, we just ain't the people you think we are. No, the phone book said you specialize in missing persons. J.D., could you explain it to her, ma'am? I just gotta get out of this frock. I feel stupid. Excuse me. What? Explain what? Well, uh, see, Will's a sensitive man, and, uh, it tears him up kind of bad when a lady cries. What he wanted me to tell you was, uh... Oh, please, you just gotta help me. Look, I've got a thousand dollars with me, but, but I could get some more. Now, no. A thousand dollars? Well, then I'm going to listen to what you got to say. Is this your sister? Yeah. I was always what you'd call the brainy type, but, uh, well, Carla had that angel face and the sweetness that went with it. <laughs> well, I'm afraid it takes a little more than good looks to make it in the music business, huh? I mean, uh, even Dolly Parton's got to have a voice to go with her, you know, her good looks. Well, Carla had a voice. She had a real good voice. She was only here a few months before she got a demo record, and, and then she won an amateur contest, and did some club dates, and, well, there was even some talk about a record contract. Then came that telegram from the Barnaby man. Barnaby? Who's Barnaby? Oh, he's the man who runs the Country Music Wax Museum. That's where Carla worked for a while when she first got into town. I called over there, talked to his wife. She said he never even sent a telegram. She hung up on me. I called back three times, three times she hung up on me. just as soon as you find out what happened to her. Well, I tell you what, we'll do everything we can possibly do. Now, you go back to your hotel room and you relax, and we'll call you if we come up with anything, okay? Okay. Judy, um, you will hold on to that picture, won't you? It's the only one I got. I sure will. You take care now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. J.D., come see this! What is it? <laughs> Look at this. What would a fellow be doing with a setup like this in his bedroom? Well, the trouble with you, Will you Banks, is you've led two shelters of a life. Now get your clothes on. We've got some work to do. What kind of work? Well, we're going to help that poor girl find her sister. Why should we? That's why. <laughs> Detectives, J.D., it ain't honest. What, a thousand bucks and all we gotta do is find out what happened? We get another thousand? But we ain't detectives. Well, neither is Jack Lord or Buddy Epson. But I bet you they'd pay him a hundred dollars a day to pretend they are. J.D., you're gonna end up filthy richer in jail. Look, we ask a couple questions. We get a couple answers. We find out what happens. Miss Harper goes back to New York happy. Or at least not quite as unhappy. Now, where's the car? Grimes. I'm looking for Grimes. Grimes. Holy smoke, look at that. Shoot. <laughs> Where are we going? to the wax museum, my boy. <laughs> ah. Now, 
will. Remember, you tell everybody we're detectives. That's a lie. It ain't a lie, it's a fear. And there's a big difference. Everybody feels. I don't. If I can help it. Well, you can't help it, so come on now. And don't worry. Politicians fib all the time and they run the country. And that's George Jones. And that's shit. Whoa. Well, that's that's him. Howdy, you the manager? The manager? No, that ain't the manager. That's the king of country music, Will. Now, Mr. A. Cup, yes. my name's J.D. Reed, and this is my friend, Will Eubanks. And, boy, I can't tell you how tickle I am well, This is you. a pleasure meeting you, gentlemen, both of you. Yes, Why do you sir. think we ought to put this, Mr. A. Cup? Just lay it down on the little bench there, darling. That'd be all right. Excuse me, ma'am. I'd like to talk to the manager. What about? About Carla Wade. Isn't that the uh, little blonde that uh, used to work with you? Well, she's a lovely lady. My husband's in his office. He's right back through there. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, Will. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Acuff, could I have your autograph? Sure you can. Got a paper? No, sir, but you can just write in my hat there. Oh, I can write in the hat, sure. <laughs> written in them before. And you know I got one of your yo-yos. You left it on the stage in Pawnee, Oklahoma. Pawnee, Oklahoma? I won it from a dude in the crap game. Oh, <laughs> I did you? I turned down $40 for it. $40? I sure did. Listen, if there's anybody else out there who wants a yo-yo for $40, me and you are going in business. I'll get you a whole truckload of them things. <laughs> All right, so you got the deal. I'm here to tell you, Carla was one of the finest, sweetest kids you'd ever hope to see. Was? I mean, when she was here, she was. I suppose she still is. And how come you sent that telegram to her sister? What telegram? I didn't even know she had a sister. J.D., the... This is Mr. Barnaby. He remembers Carla, thinks a lot of him. Hello, Mr. Barnaby. So did Roy. How'd Carla come to leave? Yeah, she had it in her head to be a star. Had to be. But while she worked here, she sold tickets, helped my wife with the wax figures, helped me with the books, that sort of thing. But Carla decided to move along after she made that demo record. Now, did you have a chance to hear it? I hope to tell you. Fact of the matter is, she is such a treasure, my wife and I set up a session for her. Sort of like a present, you know. Hey, here's a copy. She was pretty. That morning, she got herself all decked out. And she stood there in that studio just like an angel child. Make it through the night. Let me be your baby. Tell me it'll be all right. be your baby tell me it'll be all right you'd have thought we'd given her a million dollars instead of that little bit that session cost <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you thank you thanks so much oh listen if anything comes of this i owe it to all of you two a week later she just up and quit hadn't seen a sense for a while, she'd call me or my wife, and then we stopped here. Uh, do you have any idea where we could find her? No. But if you do, you tell her she's got friends that'd like to see her. You hear? You mind if we hold on to this? It's yours. Thank you, Mr. Barnaby. You've been a real help. Okay. Well, I see he gave you her demo. Yes, ma'am. Did he tell you what a sweet, virginal little saint she was? Seemed right fond of her. Well, that's where you're smarter than I was. You could tell how he felt about it right off, couldn't you? I had to walk in on that record session to find out. She was a tramp. That's what she was, a two-faced, hypocritical little tramp. Take it to the night. Let me be your baby. A friend of mine told me my husband had put up a thousand dollars for that demo session. Baby, are you a terrific? 
I'm going to make you the biggest star in this here town. And I'm going to do a few things for you, too, you animal. Oh. I came down there too late to stop it, but in time to catch him. I fired her on the spot. Uh, ma'am, you ain't exactly telling it like your husband. My husband is a damn liar. You know, Will, I don't believe a word that woman said. Do you believe her husband? Well, no, not necessarily. But Roy Acuff liked her, and I'd believe him if he said the world was going to end tomorrow. Look at it this way, we don't have to call the cops. Lieutenant Blocker, we ain't bums or nothing. We're just a couple of guys from Montana who dreamed all their life about coming to this town, about seeing all this beautiful country. And these down-home friendly folks, we love that. As a matter of fact, I was telling Will. Don't try conning me, mister. You're talking to the wrong man. I'm from Philadelphia. I'm not from Nashville. And the only reason I'm here is because my girl's married here. And I don't like their husbands. And I don't like country music. And I don't like southern accents. Well, no offense, I... Or good old boys. Or grits. Or moonshine. But most of all... I don't like concrete cowboys that drift from town to town raising the hell. I'm gonna lock you up. Uh, I don't think the law will let you lock us up. If you don't mind my saying so. Listen, I know what the law will or will not let me do. If you can show me the law we just broke, okay, you lock us up. But don't forget the doctrine of culpability. Hey, that's not like a good one. Tell him what that means. It relates to a situation where a person confronted by overwhelming pressure makes a choice between two evils. You mean like, should we get ourselves shot or should we run into the wall, right? That's right. A man cannot be held punishable should his life or liberty be in jeopardy. It's all there in the seas. Civil, common, criminal law. He's in the seas now, so all this pressure on his mind. <laughs> get out of here. And make sure I don't ever see either one of you again. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh... Hey, hey. I don't know why you want to go honky talking, will you, man? But it kind of picture again, will you? All right. Well, what do you see? An awful pretty girl. Now behind her, the sign, Alley Cat uh, Amateur Night, right? Right. And where are we? We're in Pretty's Alley. What's that sign say? Alley Cat Club. All right. I'll make a detective out of you yet. Come on. Oh, saw it. <laughs> hey, we are Ray Stevens is here tonight. Drums are flailing and sirens are wailing, what a roar. Bands are playing and flags are a waving and the vanguards are motorcycle corps. Clowns are clowning to the crowd and pinching every pretty girl who dares to smile. It's a glorious mess, everybody wears a fizz, the parade stretches out for a mile. It's a typical American phenomenon where all the members have a fine old time. It's the 43rd annual convention of the Grand Mystic Royal Order of the Nobles. The Alley Bob Temple of the Shrine. Hello, operator. Give me road 321, please. Thank you. 
Hello, noble lumpkin. This is the luster's potentate. I said it's the luster's potentate. The luster's coy. Dad, blame it. This here's Bubba. Why aren't you at the parade? What? How'd you get that big Harley up there in your room? By the ladies all silver in the downtown convention hall. Cold roast beef, string beans, mashed potatoes, and nine boring speeches and all. And all the tables look fine with the Mogan David wine and chrysanthemums on each side. And the hay high leaders in the rented duck seaters made the local heart swell with pride. It's typical American phenomenon where all the members have a fine old time. It's the 43rd annual convention of the Grand Mystic Royal Order of the Nobles. The Alibaba Kimball of the Shine. You are back at the motel. Hello, operator. Room 320. How'd you know? Oh. Hello, Coy. Where have you been? No, you wasn't at the meeting. Well, I found out that at 3 o'clock this morning, you was out there in the hotel swimming pool, and you threw the looms and bunched them waiters from the cocktail lounge. <laughs> How does old Charlene gonna find out about this, boy? Who's got in the background, boy? Hello, operator? Operator, please cut out. Code 321. Charlie! <laughs> Sings pretty good. Oh, boy, am I hungry. Sings pretty good. That was Ray Stevens. The Ray Stevens. Ray who? Oh. Will you do me a favor? While you're in the seas, read up on some country music, would you? You're embarrassing me. Well, you better pay less attention to what you called up there and more attention to the trouble we're in. Somebody tried to kill us. Maybe. Maybe somebody just mistook us for somebody else. You ever think about that? Yeah. Or maybe somebody don't want us to find out about Carla. Well, now that's dumb. Carla's dead. Yeah, but how did she die? You think she's murdered? That's something we won't know till we find out. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, Mr. Stevens, can I have your autograph, please? Why, sure. Glad to. Here. Who shall I make this out to? Well, I'm J.D., and, and this is my friend Will here. J.D., hi, Will. How you doing? All right. Great. Right. Super chef. Hey. Thanks, hon. Great. Appreciate you coming. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Barbara Mandrell, J.D., and Will. Hello. Hello, Paul. Oh, we're in a heap of trouble here. <laughs> Why? Well, Miss Mandrell, I'm gonna have to go home, and I'm gonna have to tell some friends of mine that I spoke to you in person. And when I do, one of them's gonna call me a liar. And when he does, I'm gonna hit him in the mouth, and it's gonna be the awfulest fight. <laughs> then that's gonna get Will here in a fight. He's just angling for an autograph, Pam. Prove he knows you. Let me give him one. I certainly wouldn't want to be responsible for any brawls. <laughs> Listen, I gotta go change. Barbara, I'll see you at your table okay, later. Ray. Nice meeting you, guys. Ray, nice meeting you, Ray. Ray. Show. You fellas here on a visit? Uh, well, no, actually, we are private detectives. Actually, uh, we're helping this girl we know find her sister. Any chance you've seen her? Will, this is Barbara Mandrell. She does not work talent shows, okay? My buddy here is pretty good at detecting, but he ain't from nothing about country music now. I mean, I got every record you ever made. Hey, I've not... seen this girl. Right in here. There was an amateur contest, and she won it, and the prize was appearing one night with me. Uh, Carol, I think was her name. Carla. Carla Wayne. Yeah. The man that can tell you about her runs this wax museum down here. Barnaby is his name. Oh, no, no. We've already talked to him. He hadn't seen her since she left, what, three months ago? Well, the night she sang with me, he was there. She was good, too. Not polished, but a lot of promise and a really nice girl. He was giving her a hassle back in the dressing room, and the management had the cops throw him out. Do you know what the argument was about, ma'am? Well, as near as I could make out, he was really hopping mad because she was coming on to this awful dude, Joe Hatchett. Looks like we ought to talk to this hat check guy. Yeah. Well, if you do, you watch yourselves. He smiles a lot, but he's a killer. He's mean. He's into a lot of things, and most of them are crooked. Like what, ma'am? Well, for one thing, I've heard that he runs a floating crap game where nobody comes out a winner. Oh! Well, now, where would somebody find that floating crap game? <laughs> well, I don't know anything about dice, but my steel guitar player does. In fact, he's into about three months' salary worth of dice. And he lost it on the Cumberland Queen.
gonna be great. Not for me, it ain't. What's wrong? I get seasick. On a boat tied to the dock? I get seasick in a bathtub. Let's find a hat check and get this over with. Take this money we got left here, and I'm gonna go down there and get in that game and turn this into a small river bottom farm because dice is my long suit. Last time I heard poker was your long suit, son. I feel lucky tonight. The lucky guy in that game is the one that don't get his legs broke. Mr. Right, Jack? This dude faded 500. Yes, we got it. He wants to leave his marker with us. I don't take markers. Take his watch and his rings and throw them out. Oh, you fellows are just in town in a couple of days and you've already located the action, huh? Tell you the truth, action ain't what we're looking for. It's answers, and so far they've been pretty hard to get. I run a game, fella. Not an information desk. Well, you knew Carla Wade, and we want to find out what happened to her. Do you see how healthy I am? Well, it's not from jogging. It's from minding my own business. This is our business. Come on, pal. I know every cop in this town. You ain't no cop. Ah, uh, well, let's just say there's some dudes up in New York City got a big interest in what happened to Carla, okay? And they're dudes with a lot of muscle. You do? Look, I don't know what happened to her. But I'll tell you something, whatever it is, I hope it's bad. She is a no-good, blood-sucking... Look, all I know is she got what she wanted out of me and my contacts. A few introductions, some club dates, a couple commercials. Then I talked to this friend of mine who, uh, who owed me a few favors to let her host us to this jockey convention. <laughs> and she meets Mr. Superstar. Who's the superstar? I got a problem here, Mr. Ratchet? No, it's all right. These, uh, these fellows were sent in by some heavy characters from New York. Well, they told the lookout topside they were tourists in Montana. You want to explain that? Uh, yeah. Uh, number one, what's wrong with Montana? Number two, me and my buddy Will here visited Opryland. And my godfather in New York sent us some orders. You dig? Why don't you uh, find out what these fellows really want, and then drop them off at the hospital? JD. Oh. Ain't you glad I'm here to help you out, son? Oh, glad my insurance is paid up. Oh, that's the guy that don't like cowboys. Come on. Hey, I wonder how the police knew we was in trouble. Maybe they heard it from your godfather in New York.
Morning. You're just the man we want to see. We got a serious complaint we want to put on record. I spent the last four hours trying to find something to pin on you two and make it stick. But since you weren't in the game, the DA won't charge you. Well, that's only fair. I'm one of you. Either you two get out of Nashville, or I'm going to find a way to have your hides. Now, that's our serious complaint. You've been spending a lot of energy trying to pin something on us. Yeah, I and mean, we think your time would be better spent out protecting innocent citizens of Nashville. We've been shot at, beat up. Somebody tries to, to blow us up all in the same day. Heck, there's more violence here than in the whole state of Texas, with New York City and Detroit thrown in. Let them out. Out! Get out! Yeah, and, and just be glad we ain't taxpaying citizens. First off, I'm going to take me one of the sexy bubble baths. You do that while I throw us up some eggs, okay? I didn't know any better. I think Lieutenant Blocker had been here. Well, what are they looking for? Hey, the package. The one we picked up for Lonnie Grind. Maybe. Well, did they get it? Nope, I hit it good. Shoot. Will, you reckon we ought to call the cops? J.D., that fight last night must have scrambled your brain. Phone. Where's the phone? Hello. Oh, Lonnie. Yeah, how you doing? Yeah, everything just fine. Well, I'm calling you from Memphis. I just wanted to check on you boys and make sure you're enjoying yourselves. Oh, we're enjoying ourselves. Oh, by the way, did you remember to pick up that package for me? Right. Picked up the package, put it away safe. Good thing, too, Lonnie, because we come in here a minute ago, and somebody has just ransacked your place. Now, don't worry about it, though. We'll clean it up. We'll take care of everything. Yeah. Well, we'll see you. All right. Well, send you his best, Will. What did he say about his place getting tore up? Not much. You know, maybe in his line of work, his digs get tore up all the time. I don't know. I wonder what's in that package of his. I don't know. He won't look. We're guests in his house. Hardly seems a thing to do. You know, I could ask him. What you should ask him is what a real detective does when he's been worked over the way we've been. Well, Kojak would probably just keep on sucking on his sucker. Ah! Perry Mason would probably talk to Della for a day I and said a, half. a real detective, J.D. Now, a real detective would have given up the case and shagged on out of here before he got his head broke. You know what's bugging me, Will? Now, we asked a few questions about Carla, and me and you darn near killed. But now, Kate's been asking questions all over this town before she ever got to us. You're right. That lady could be in more trouble than we are. We better go warn her. Come on. She got our message. No, sir, she didn't. I'll try a room for you. Thank you. Sorry, gentlemen, no answer. Well, sir, I guess uh, since we're here, we ought to mess around a while until she comes in. Ma'am? Thank you. Son, I could spend a week right here. Opera land. Opera land. Yeah, the opera right across the road. You ever been to opera? No. Boy, you'll love it. I bet there's 50 stars within a half mile of us right this minute. Oh, oh, I'm just panting, waiting for you to ask him to sign an autograph. Well, suppose, now just suppose, they got her. Who? Kate. <laughs> she's just out, you know, maybe shopping or something. Yeah, or maybe she's laying up there in a pool of blood. 
Where are you going? Up to Kate's room. Man, come on. Still in the seas. We're already breaking and entering. I'm not going to have no part in digging into somebody's private belongings. Well, we ain't going to find out any clues as to what happened to her, but just stand up to this. In your messed up head. Well, a detective has just got to take chances where he works. Get out of the way. Head of yours, we don't know what the devil we're doing. We are solving our case. That's what we're doing. Look here. I found this in Kate's suitcase. Now she should have given us this up front, because this is a song, and it was especially written by Woody Stone. And look what it says right there. To my sweet Carla from the one who loves you more than life. And that's Woody's name right down there. Woody who? Woody is probably the biggest, the most famous, the most important country star there ever was. That's who Woody is. And he was in love with Carla. Well, I guess if we're going to get this over with, we might as well just go on up there and see him. You don't just go up and see him. He's got agents. He's got managers, bodyguards. You could see the president. Look, in... we're just going to go out to his place, ring the bell. Well, would you just get on with reading the encyclopedia? Because the truth of the matter is, you're about ten volumes away from being more than plain dumb. And until you get to the D's, you probably ain't gonna know what dumb is. Dumb? I'll tell you what dumb is. Dumb is ending up in Nashville instead of Hollywood. Dumb is pretending we're detectives. Dumb is driving somebody else's car into a police station. Dumb is spending the night in a tank. And dumb is looking for a pool of blood where there ain't one. That's what dumb is. Well, I never saw this, Barbie. 
Uh, but hey, Will, I got an idea. Look. No! Well, get us to see Wally Stone and stop. No! Well, don't say no to hear what I got to say. But just give them. I ain't gonna have no part of this. Would you trust me? Mr. I am just gonna stay here outside and wait for the police to come. And when they do, well, I'm gonna laugh fit to die when they haul you off to the tenant blocker. Just trust and me. And when he hangs you by your tongue from the city hall flagpole, I'm gonna wait down below just to claim your ordinary body. Good day, sir. Oh, howdy, neighbor. Is there something I can do to assist you? Well, now I reckon it's more what I can do to assist you, my good man. You see, I work for a gentleman called Will Eubanks the Ford. Now, he's got four boys. And when he buys something for one of them, well, he has to buy it for all of them, you know. Give them all an oil well at least when he was born, you know. And so now old Will wants to buy all his boys one of these here uh, uh, Excelsiors. One each? That's what he said. Four Excaliburs? No, actually he wants five. He wants one for himself. But there's some things we got to wig out here first. Now, does this, uh, does this work? Everything works. Well, old Will ain't never had him no custom-made car before, so J.D. says to me, he says, you make sure everything works before you ever sign a check. I understand that. Remember, this is an Excalibur. Right, and that's what he wants, an Excalibur. And I figure I can judge this pretty good driving it the next couple of days. Your references, sir, the banks are closed for the weekend. Oh, the banks, yeah, the banks. Oh, we've got four banks to sell. <laughs> I'll tell you what we do, look. You hold off detailing other cars till you get the paperwork okay. I'll try this one out, and when I come in Monday, we'll sign the papers. How's that? You will be careful of her, sir. Just like she was my own. <laughs> I'll give you this, J.D. You could start with a toothpick and end up with a lumber yard. <laughs> Hey, my good man, we're delivering this car to Mr. Stone. It's a present from his fans out in Montana. Okay, up the drive and park it. Thanks, right sir. Fellas, I agreed to see you because anybody with imagination to bring that car up to my place and convince my people it's a gift for me, well, they deserve a little attention. <laughs> Told you he was a sport, didn't I tell you? <laughs> I'm sorry I can't help you. This girl you're looking for, what's her name? Carla Wade. Yeah, I don't know. And to my regulation, I never did. I've got some recording to do in the studio out back. You guys can find your way out, huh? Sure.